his penalty was such BS um, for how many yeah. times other riders. Look, but we're not going to be able, we're not going to be able to change it. So it, you know, I know it's frustrating and everybody has stated the same thing. Well, it really um, only would have gained him like one or two points, but it's going to be the deer. It's going to be the difference at the end of the season, unfortunately, because it, Look, like, like John said, those top three guys are just going to keep swapping. No one's going to be surprised if Levi wins, if Vial wins, if Deegan wins. It's going to be literally down to the very last race of the year. Go ahead, Trav. Sorry. Touching on that penalty thing, it's the penalty thing should have been they either both got penalized or neither of them got penalized. And they pulled the trigger super fast on Vial. And then because they were dragging their feet on at the end with Deegan, they, they ended up not penalizing Deegan. Here's the thing. I've heard all week that AMA has all these different camera views and all these different sector time things they can use to determine whether you pick up or lose time. They have all this data. The same data that supposedly Feld has as far as the nine whoops and the no dragons back goes. And as we've all heard from all these different riders, cool, if you have the data, just show us the data. Like, if you have the data that Vial picked up time and Deegan didn't, Dude, my last game. video, I used the GPS of Lip Pro to prove that he didn't really gain any time that, with the I mean, GPS. So that, that's exact. That's exactly it. Like, if there's data and you're doing this, like if we were watching Formula One, they would be able to show us. Number one, they make a decision like that, just like you did with the Vial penalty. Somebody exceeds track limits in Formula One, it is like within five minutes we have a decision of like exceeded track limits, thirty second penalty, whatever it is. Which is fine. Again, I don't have a problem if Vial got penalized for exceeding track limits. No big deal. But Deegan exceeded it too. He should also be penalized. Now, at the end of the day, do I really think either one of them deserved a penalty? No. No, like, absolutely it, not. Absolutely It was not. like slightly off the track. Oh, crap. Nobody was there. It wasn't, and John, close your ears. It wasn't Jason Anderson, fourth gear next to the whoops, freaking pinned like, you know, whatever. It was literally like off the track, back on the track for both of them. Okay. So I, I mean, it, it's, it's just one of those things. Again, if we have data, show us data. Everyone loves data. Now everyone's data whores. We all love it. We all want to see it. Show us the data. Show us the time he gained. Show us the time he lost. No problem. We're cool. But when you don't show us the data, you just say, Oh, I have it. And doing this, we're in this gray area that of course, then you have the the sides of everything. It cannot be black and white. So now it just turns into this debacle where we're all talking about this, yelling and screaming in the comments with with everyone. And yeah, it's just a mess. Yeah, it, it wouldn't it, be a big it, deal if Tom didn't get a penalty. Like maybe yeah. revise the rules, warning or something. But but I beating... like that Tom got penalized immediately because I feel like this is the kind of crap we need because we've had it too many times where it's been in the situation of like Deegan where we don't give a penalty immediately, and then it's two hours after the race. We haven't had a press conference. We still don't know what the fuck is going on, and we're all just sitting here waiting around like, is the race done? Is it over? Whatever. Well, the like, penalty report still isn't even up. I was going to say, it should be more immediate. So much you you like can't even look at what actually was the penalty. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm ranting. No, no, no you're not I, ranting. And Johnny, Trav, did I understand you correctly? Like he, he looks like is it... Wants, uh, Go for is it, the is the AMA saying that they have uh, cameras around the track? Did I understand you correctly? With yes, that? according okay. to what I've heard, and one of the things I was listening to is Andrew Short on Pulp MX because he is there as a for the AMA as a rider liaison or some something like that, whatever they got going on. But from what he was saying, he's like they have other camera angles that you don't see on TV. They have different timing loops and things that you don't see on TV or the general public doesn't have access to. They have a whole bunch, like a smorgasbord of crap is what Shorty was saying to be able to determine things like this, which again, if we do great, let's see it. Show us the data. And but it's not actually problem. AMA. It's AMA pro racing, which is uh, a subsidiary. I can't but isn't it. it because Mike Pelletier is still in charge of it. So like, is it really something different? What okay, all right, all right. True, true we statement. Go down John, that. We shouldn't go you down that path like you wanted there, to Johnny. say something. Did you want to say it'd something? It'd or? be nice if the fans got to see that stuff for sure, but it'd be really nice if everybody else got to see that stuff. <laughs> like, well, that, that's a reason why I was asking, John, because to me, it's like if you've got the analytics tool to make an executive decision, then isn't that make the AMA look completely inept? 
it, it's one thing to say, well, we, we have no way to be able to, to see what happened. Well, if I'm understanding you correctly, Trav, if you have the resources to make an executive decision and then the executive decision is completely opposite using the same resources, that makes the governing body look completely inept, in my opinion. Bingo. It just doesn't you know, make any sense. If if you have the data, show it, prove it that, you know, because I use tools that said he didn't gain anything. What I've heard is he's also gained 0.3 seconds. And I'm like, even if that is true, 0.3 seconds, is that determined for a whole position penalty? That, that it's Or Johnny, <laughs> or Johnny, take it a step further. If you've quantified it to a 0.3 advantage, then take the finish line time and deduct 0.3. And if it puts him in first place, then he gets first place. If it doesn't, it has no influence or on the race. Or just revise the rules again. Like you go, you get back on the track where you got off and you definitely yeah. lose time. That's, that's a bad rule. I heard something the other day. Somebody was saying like, well, if they go off the track, they should have to take their throttle hand off. Because you know how like guys put their hand up? Well, if you made them take their throttle hand off, obviously – that's going to slow you down because you should technically get a time penalty when you go off the track. And number two, it, it would be night. It would be clear as day. Like you either took your hand off and wave or you didn't. It oh, and then you could re-enter where it's safe again. And then you could still yeah. haul ass and do a 75 foot <laughs> jump <laughs> afterwards. John, um, you again, you know, you're being respectful. What did you want to say? Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm with you guys. I think, I think the hardest part is, is like, if you go off the, like, if you just take away, like just pure facts, if you go off the track, that's just that in itself. It doesn't matter how long it doesn't matter that that is your off course. So there is some sort of repercussion that probably in the AMA, AMA's eyes need to happen. Now, how they go about that, what the penalty is, all that stuff. That's a whole different conversation. Yeah, some of the but comments are think... saying they're penalizing Levi for staying on the track, which is true because... <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I honestly, after this conversation, I really like Travis's idea of you take your throttle hand off, even if that's for a second or something, mm -hmm. boom, that was enough to just, lose. just touch your helmet, just touch your helmet and come back. So it's a yeah, definitive just, just amount of time. Band. Hey, sorry. I, I fucked up. Da, 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 well, da. No, so, no. I'm, I'm with Rob on this. I actually like the time back at the finish line. I think personally, I think that's the fairest way to do it. If you had a guaranteed, uh, video that you could document how much time somebody lost, whether it's supercross outdoors, doesn't matter. I like that because in other sports, that is the most fair way at the finish line verse. Um, obviously if it's like a reckless, you know, you're wide open and jumping off, you know, doing crazy stuff, then it's a whole different conversation. But if it's like a Vial or Deegan type, uh, incident, I, I do like the time back just because I, I think that's the most relevant. That makes perfect sense. Or have like a specific, you go off the track, it's five seconds, you know, or, or something. Because we have transponders, that's how it happens. Moving to...